Hey there, Internet. So, for the first time in 100 years, uh, Speaker of the House wasn't chosen on day one of a new Congress. This could be good for the Republican Party, it could be good for the conservative movement, and for the country, and here's why. Kevin McCarthy is not a leader. He is certainly not the leader we need. If he was a leader, he would have had this all settled out by now. Before even walking in there, he would have had the deals made. Because sometimes you have to make deals in politics. It's a sad, dirty pro truth. That is part of what happens. And you have people that don't just don't get it about the anger of the base. They don't get it that you have to make deals. You have two sides that don't understand. You're going to have to deal with divided government. But when you can't, when the base is saying we want to be able to hold the speaker's feet to the fire and they're wanting real investigations and be able to have not just a bunch of go along to get along crap, their base doesn't get, or the establishment, excuse me, doesn't get. It. It's been going on for a long time. If Kevin McCarthy was the leader we needed, instead of win winning the House by just a very narrow majority, we'd have 20 or 30, we'd be 20 seats up. You could have, you might have still won without that. You could have had some rebel, rebels in it and you still won the speakership. Didn't do it. Didn't have it close enough. And strategy, if you watch my election postmortem, I did it late because I wanted to step back and not be all caught up in the emotions of it. If he was a leader, that, that wouldn't have been an issue. He would have been stepping up and saying, this is our plan. And they would have had a strategy. Those are two things. Strategy and leadership are very, very, very much connected. You know, the, the people that are the holdouts right now, they are thinking, they're not necessarily thinking strategically. But these people that are insisting on not giving them the concessions are not thinking about the base. You know, when I've, I've never had a hostility to Paul Ryan. When he was speaker, he was dealing with divided government. When Paul Ryan was speaker, when Obama was president, it was divided government. He was going to ha have to make some deals. But Kevin McCarthy was nowhere to be found. Paul Ryan was nowhere to be found when it came time to about when Trump proposed a budget that was almost no growth. It was the first fairly pleasant surprise I saw out of Trump. I didn't think he'd propose something like that. Then he turned into a big government Republican. But you got to have you got to think in those terms both strategically and in terms of principles. And the people that are the moderates, they think that it's a principle to be a moderate. That is never a principle. That's just saying I'm going to give away the farm at half the rate of the Democrats. You're still going to go the same, same way. You're just not choosing to stand for anything. And so, instead of, tonight they apparently had a meeting and a lot of the holdouts were saying it was just a, all they tried to do was browbeat them into supporting McCarthy. Well, that, those are the kind of people that are going to say, we're, we're not going to support you no matter how much you browbeat us. You browbeat us, we're going to dig in about our concessions. A leader, the kind of leader the Republican Party needs, the kind of leader that the country needs is the kind of person that's going to say, what do I have to do to get your concerns dealt with? And then I tell these other people, what are your concerns that why this can't work? That's what a leader would do. Newt Gingrich was a better leader. I mean, he, he was harsh, but a lot of people, you know, he was very much a lightning rod, but he's the one that pushed through, came up, helped come up with the contract with America. He's the one that pushed things to be that they, they were going to have these 13 items, they're going to bring them to a floor vote, and then their people were going to vote on them. That's more of a leader than others. And there shouldn't be a sense of entitlement. You know, I've got my top three, and Ted Cruz is up there, but he slipped with me. Why? He has a sense of entitlement of, he was the runner-up against Trump, so he should be the natural next nominee. No. you got to earn that. Ted Cruz is going to have to re-earn my support. And it should be that way with... with Somebody wanting to be House Speaker, not just work your way up the system. Not just, you know, keep, oh, I moved to this committee, then this committee. It's not like, you know, oh, I'm going to be the department manager at this job, and then I'll be a department manager over 
at this other part of the company. Then I'll become an assistant manager and then I'll become a manager. That's not how it works in politics. You got to constantly earn. And Republicans should have that attitude. We're supposed to be about meritocracy. So Kevin McCarthy, I think, needs to step aside. I don't know that Jim Jordan is really the best choice either. But they need to step aside for somebody that actually wants to lead and stand for something. Without having to go to somebody that's you know comes off as crazy. I mean, I like Lauren Boebert, but she doesn't come off as like we would like. And the, the, so the holdouts need to think strategically. What do they want? They actually came said, hey, these are the concessions we want. So they made an offer. There was, there's no counter offer from the, their opposites that are supporting McCarthy. Their just attitude was, we'll just threaten to support a Democrat. Well, we know who the actors are. Just like with Obamacare, we found out John McCain was an actor. He didn't really support anything except what made him popular and got him votes. Same thing with these guys that are wanting to be holdouts. Because they should be making a counter off and saying, well, we'll give you these concessions if you'll support McCar McCarthy. That's what they would do. But they're forgetting that they need to dance with the people that brought them to the dance, which is their base. And that's what these holdouts really kind of represent, is base, the base that could walk away. You have to have your base. I didn't write, haven't always written off people, any, anybody, but when you start disrespecting the base, which to a large extent, the people that talk about being a moderate like McCain or Romney would do, but even with like Jeb Bush, I never wrote him off. People forget that Jeb Bush, when he was Florida governor, he was the conservative choice. We wouldn't, Florida would not be the secure red state if not for Jeb Bush. People need to remember that. But when he not only said never Trump, because I never believed Trump was a conservative, but he said never Cruz. When, what did, was Cruz's biggest crime? Doing things like when he got told to go along to get along on immigration, he said, no, I made a promise to my constituents to not support amnesty. And you know what? So did you. And that pissed off a lot of people. Well, when he said never cruise, Jeb Bush lost me. He said, when Jeb Bush said, I don't need the conservatives to win, I was done with him. And they have to understand, you need the conservatives too. So they need to start making a deal. Whether it's, we will all agree that we will not support a bunch of these bills, or we will agree that we're going to have real investigations on Biden, or we're going to not, not just go through the motions. They need to start seriously negotiating this isn't just a you get told what to do and if these guys could love this country if they love if they want to see what's best for this country they'll have a deal made tonight and they'll walk in and have it done on a, a single ballot especially these people that are in the that are the, the, the establishment if they're about not just power they'll be making some deals not just trying to browbeat people because you got to get, McCarthy needs to get 14, four, 15 of the 20 people that bailed on him on the last ballot. Or they need to come up with a compromise candidate and let McCarthy step aside, which should be acceptable too. But that's where it's at. That's what they need to think about. That's all they need to do. They need to start thinking both strategically and about principles because that's why it brought about the rise of the Trump and the Cruz. And the, because Trump, I don't think, had any principles, but he spoke to people about what he would do where they'd been betrayed so many times before by regular politicians. People that would have normally agreed with Cruz. I remember one friend, this one friend of mine, that same person that was... Uh, a new PCO that had to deal with the people saying, oh, it's McCain's turn. She she always went for the, she's deceased now, and she always went for the least conventional candidate. So it wasn't a shock that she went for Trump because she had been betrayed repeatedly by, by politicians saying, I'll support this, and then they never do it, or worse yet, they do exactly the opposite. She had been 
so she joined for Trump and she criticized Cruz as too, too much of a, con, too conventional, basically. She said, he seemed too establishment. I'm like, nothing establishment to what he said, but he was more your conventional politician. So, of course, she wanted to go the other way. But McCarthy, he needs to go. And Republicans need to say, find something else. It's, sorry, you've spent too much time in there. Just like Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell shouldn't have been in there. He should have been rejected as Senate Majority Leader. There's too much of that problem inside the Republican Party. And, it's you know, the only solution to... There, third parties is not an effective solution. The only solution is constant rebellion within the Republican Party by the base. Uh, it's the only way you would keep anyone's feet to the fire is to make them afraid that they'll get primaried. That is the only solution. And just remember that when you, if you used to be the insurgent, once you're in office, once you're controlling the party, now you are the establishment. A lot of these guys came up, that are in power now, came up with a, um, in the tea, during the Tea Party period. I remember how that was not necessarily a bunch of establishment types. That was, a lot of that was an insurgency within the Republican Party seeking fiscal responsibility. And they, after a time, they got comfortable some of them got tired and moved on out of politics. And some of them started going along to get along. They liked the power. And so it need, needs to be stopped. But right now, Kevin McCarthy isn't convincing me that I would want him for speaker. And it shouldn't convince anybody else. Until then, like this video if you can. Helps with the algorithm. Comment. Maybe you have a suggestion who would be a better speaker that the Republicans could put forward or a deal that could be made. I'd be interested to hear it and share this with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. It would be nice to start getting some subscribers and some traction. Until then, you all take care.